Hello everybody. Hope you're having a wonderful day. My eyes starting to itch, yay. Ah, okay. My name is Bobby. This is my channel. And I love you. I want to talk about journalism for a second real quick because I already had a thing going earlier about freedom of information. I just posted that video or I'm posting it currently. And I thought I'd do a follow-up video about um, slander and defamation. Usually it's called defamation of character. And these are important things because I had to learn these things in journalism. Because if I was going to go out into the world and I was going to do stories about individuals, especially when you do stories about powerful people, like, I don't know, Pelosi or Obama, you have to be careful not to say anything that isn't true. Because if you do, their lawyers, lawyers will show up and sue the shit out of you till you don't have a job anymore. So I had to learn these things. You know, it's a crow. Basically, defamation of character and slander pretty much one and the same. They can, you can use them separately, but basically it's talking shit about somebody, saying something about somebody that's not true. For example, there's a senator that died in Congress, Strom, Strom, Strom Thurmond, whatever the fuck his name was. He was a grand dragon for the KKK. Yes, he was. See, that is not slander or defamation because that statement is a fact. He was, he's dead now, but he was a grand dragon in the KKK. And he was a senator in Congress. Hillary Clinton was at his funeral. That is also a fact. She also praised Strom Thurmond. Another fact. Why in the fuck would anybody who knows anything about civil rights and knows anything about the KKK would be at a motherfucker's funeral praising him knowing that he was a motherfucking grand dragon of the KKK? Hillary Clinton, why would you do that? See, now this, as a journalist, and even if it's my opinion, these are facts. Not only is there video of her at his funeral saying these wonderful things about the Grand Dragon of the KKK, but the fact that he was actually a Grand Dragon of the fucking KKK. Obviously, I am very passionate about disinformation when it comes to racism. And, and using people in their ignorance to hate each other because of the pigment of their skin. I am very passionate about that because I don't believe, I've been a victim of it and I don't believe in the bullshit. Just because you're light skin doesn't mean you don't get picked on by other cultures. I got, I've been picked on my whole life by other cultures, but I didn't take that shit personally because I don't believe in that shit. I, I took, the person that I took responsibility for was the motherfucker that was, was causing me trauma, that was being violent towards me. That person I held responsible. I didn't hold the whole motherfucking race of individuals. I, if some if Hawaiian came up and whooped my ass, I wouldn't hold Hawaii responsibility you know, for a hundred Hawaiian coming and whooping my ass, right? That was just that individual's personal decision to do harm on another human being. Fucking an asshole. So if, if, you're a, if you're whatever color you are and you're going out and being harmful to other human beings, then you're just a fucking asshole and you need to take responsibility for that. I'm not going to go out, like I said, if somebody's ha hateful or mean to me, I'm not going to go find every, you know, if a Filipino decides to be a dick to me, I'm not going to go out and hate the Philippines. You know, it's just, it's a fucking ignorant statement. So why racism exists is, is a great tool to divide us, period, in a story. And that's why I think that is an important story between Hillary Clinton and a KKK Grand Dragon and her loving him. <sighs> you know what I mean? What the fuck is that all about? Which is why it's all bullshit and they're all globalists and they think you're all ignorant fucking serfs and peasants and they just want to use the shit out of people. They're horrible human beings. I could talk about the Bohemian Grove. That's not slander. I'm not saying anybody's name. I'm simply saying a state. Uh, two words put together in the same sentence 
You can do the Google research yourself and see what you think about it. But there's no journalism anymore. It used to be... That's what I'm saying. When I can sit there and listen to these fuckers lie openly about people on television and get away with it, and they don't get sued. They don't get held responsible. And it's like, how the fuck can you call that journalism when you, you, you're sitting there lying about another human being, and it's all political. Come on, it's all fucking political. There is no right and wrong. There's just the, the powerful and the keeping the power at any cost. Mail-in ballots. Are you kidding me? Anyway, as a journalist, defamation and slander are two things that are la are basically they're persona non gratis. That's the word. They're untouchable. You you can't use them. It doesn't matter. It's kind of like the Miranda rights. You know, if if, the, if they do National Security Act, you're fucked. You they could throw you in a hole forever. So basically, there is no. You know, I mean, unless you're, you know, unless you're not, if you drink the punch and you work for CNN, you can lie your ass off and there's no consequences. Okay, here's the thing. There, except, there is exceptions. I will say Nick Sandman was, I think, might be the turning point. This, this whole Kyle Rottenhouse, whatever the hell his kid, that kid's name is, he's going to sue the shit out of everybody. And once that happens and that goes down, then we'll see how things start changing. But until you get these assholes sued for all the slander, horrible shit they say, because basically they're lying to people. And, they're, and the people are so stupid that they're, they're believing it. Not only that, but they're not having to be corrected. A great example. As a journalist, if I was a newspaper person, right, and I wrote an article about somebody, and that article was false... And that person came to my and said, look, that was bullshit. That's not right. That's, and they gave him the proof. I would have to re write a retraction. I would literally have to say, I was wrong. They were right. This is the true story. Forgive me. You know, mea copa, right? You know, that would be what I would have to do. They don't do that in the news industry. In, in broadcast, in media, they don't do mea copas. They don't do um, retractions. They lie their ass off and then just ignore it. Say, oh, well, you know. And then somebody else comes out and say, well, that was false. And they're like, oh, we're on the new shit, dude. We got, we got this Ukraine thing going on. You know, that kind of stuff. They just... It... By the way, <laughs> the same media that was calling these the Ukrainian government and officials a bunch of corrupt scumbags are now praising them as heroes. So I don't understand how that fucking works. <sighs> this is journalism. This is my journalistic... If You know, I'm sorry. This is not part of my spiritual growth but it's also part of the collective because we all you know every everybody in the collective that gets harmed by this that gets led astray by false information and it ends up harming other people you have people that were like BLM and Antifa you have these young kids college age fucking kids running around physically beating the shit out of people that they don't even know because the color of their skin and I'm just watching this on television. They're burning down, burning down fucking neighborhoods. And I'm like, what the fuck? And they were getting away with it. All with their masks on. And that, that was a big part of it. And I will throw out this. When Antifa started doing that, what's that guy's name? The, the Stephanopoulos, the, no, Yiannopoulos, uh, the, the gay dude that was all big fan of Trump and uh, he was just going around just insulting lesbians and they were getting pissed and he was just being, you know, doing satire, just getting, uh, you know, hosed for it. Anyway, I forget his name, whatever. But when Antifa went to Berkeley and just destroyed Berkeley and they had those masks on and they were all, but I mean, this was before the mask mandates. And I'm like, why the fuck aren't these people getting arrested? If I go into a bank with a mask on, I'm getting fucking thrown down and cuffed. But these assholes were burning down Berkeley and they weren't even getting fucking arrested or nothing. It was like, how the fuck does this work? You can't walk the streets with the... Uh, you can't. And then, then I thought about it. I was like, son of a bitch. They're preparing for something. They're getting... Because first of all, the fact that they weren't arresting these kids that were... they were Because you couldn't tell who they were. So they could smash windows and beat the shit out of you and burn down cop cars and nobody's going to be able to find any video of who their faces are. Right? So that's why you arrest him. As a cop, I'd arrest anybody in a fucking zone like that. I mean, anybody wearing a fucking mask, you arrest them. 
And if you don't arrest them, you pull their masks and you take a picture of them and you get IDs and then you will figure it out later, right? Right? This is how law and order works. So when they got away with that shit at Berkeley, I was like, fuck, they're playing on something. Because that means the authorities at the time were okay with the burning and the, and the beatings and the, and the mess. And then, of course, all this bullshit shows up. And then, you know, Antifa and BLM coming together and just destroying fucking towns. And, yeah, people were killed. And this is the worst part is the people that were killed were just shop owners. And people were like, just don't destroy my shop. And they were getting the shit beat out of them by these fucking scumbags. Who weren't just burning down the fucking towns. They were robbing the stores. So they were basically looting and stealing and killing. And, and it was all mostly peaceful. That's the journalism. That's news nowadays. You can have an asshole sitting on the mic going, these are mostly peaceful protesters. And behind him, a fucking burning building and people running around with stolen goods. And he's just all... It's a good cause. It's like, motherfucker, dude. <sighs> anyway. Love and light. <laughs> Sorry. I get so caught up in this shit. Just because it's passionate to me. Like I said, when you're an empath and you feel this, you feel the... You feel the, 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 the fear and the confusion of human beings en masse. It's really, it's really pisses me off. It's like, son of a bitch, man. I mean, I'm going to generate some light today. I'm going to do some loving. I'm going to just be all happy and sing and just be cool. And I'm going to generate my, my power station so people can tap in. But I also have to get out information. And this is knowledge. This is me ranting a little bit. But also, I've, it's knowledge. I've won two years at least studying journalism. Come on now. Give it to me, babe. Just do the research yourself. That's all I gotta say. Anyway, I love you. God loves you, and the universe is digging you. So be wise and enlighten yourself. Critical thinking, people.